I want to uh, welcome you for the afternoon and thank you for joining us for this kickoff of our Invest in Ivy Tech campaign. See what we did there in Ivy Tech campaign, Indiana? Got that? And uh, we're really excited because we've asked you to join us for something known as a steel topping ceremony. So you've already heard some of the great opportunities that are happening around the state, but one of the things that we're really committed here locally is helping our students locally succeed. And part of that is the new building that you're going to hear about today. And part of that is a, a, a ceremony that happens with all new buildings of major uh, size. It's called the steel topping. And you are going to have an opportunity to participate. So one of the opportunities we've already uh, one of these opportunities is to invest in our building, and we've already received strong community support for the future of our campus. And in a little bit, we have just a huge announcement that we're going to make that I'm sure a lot of you are here for. Before we begin, I do have some folks in the audience I would like to introduce. So first of all, Jesse Brand was walking around here somewhere. Where is he? There he is. He's in the back. Jesse Brand is our state trustee representing uh, Columbus and our county. So if you would please welcome Jesse Brand. We also are honored to have a past trustee. He was Jesse Brand's predecessor, Tony Morvek. Tony Morvek, would you raise your hand? He was a previous state trustee. So thank you for being here today, sir. We also have Richard Beckhort. Richard, I'd ask Richard to stand, but he's going to, yeah, there he goes. He's our campus trustee chair currently serving in that. Jody is here. Jody Ingolstadt is up front here. She is our state foundation board trustee, so she works with the Reese closely with our trustees. Did Kathy Oren sneak in on me somewhere? Oh, there she is. Hey, Kathy. You're just right in front of me. I'm sorry. I knew you were here. Uh, Kathy is a, a campus, our campus trustee secretary, so she serves on our campus trustees, so if you would welcome her. And then we have our BCSC superintendent, Dr. Jim Roberts, in the back, who is also a campus trustee, so please welcome Jim. So here's the fun part. We're now going to transition the celebration to our steel topping ceremony, which commemorates the completion of our new building's steel structure. And if you've not been outside to see that, you're going to have an opportunity to step out back in a little bit. I'm sure many of you have seen this building rising up over Polling Hall. We want to start by recognizing our current facility and the legacy of its namesake. Polling Hall has served Ivy Tech's home in Columbus since 1983. Before Polling Hall, Ivy Tech moved around to different buildings and locations around the city. Wherever there was room to teach a course, Ivy Tech was there. <laughs> After more than a decade of having no formal campus, a member of the college stepped forward to establish a proper place for Ivy Tech in Columbus. That man was Harvey S. Polling Jr. And he served as a vice president and dean of the Ivy Tech Columbus and Bloomington region. We were combined at one point in the early 1980s. He led the drive to have, India, have the Indiana General Assembly approve four and a half million in funding to construct the building you're sitting in now. Under Mr. Poling's leadership, this location was selected at what is now the Columbus Municipal Air Park. In 1983, the new 81,000 square foot Ivy Tech Columbus campus opened. It offered program areas including electronics, medical assisting, practical nursing, computer programming, commercial art, and photography and automotive and diesel. We still have all of those programs except automotive and diesel today, so I think it's fun to watch and uh, hear that legacy. Mr. Poling was instrumental in ensuring residents of this area had access to high quality, career-focused education, again, similar to our mission today. He saw the need to give Ivy Tech a permanent home in Columbus, and his legacy for educational attainment continues to this day. After establishing this campus, Mr. Poling was appointed to serve as the Vice President of Development and Foundation Director for Ivy Tech. He sadly passed away in 1986 at the young age of 53. In 2011, former campus chancellor John Hogan determined, rightfully so, that this building should honor Mr. Poling for his efforts to establish our campus. Our building was then designated Poling Hall and signage was added as a tribute to Mr. Poling, which is why to this day you walk through the front doors and we say welcome to Poling Hall. We are joined, we are not joined today, no, today um, we were to have uh, Harvey Poling's widow, Nancy, and his grandson. Unfortunately, they were unable to make it today. 
So we want to thank you to both of them. We had a nice conversation with them last week. We talked about the legacy, and they're very excited that we're going to continue the legacy. And you, you'll see a board up here, and we hope you, all of you will come up here and look at this board and see the legacy. But we're going to honor the legacy of Polling Hall and our new building through a display in our reception area. And we've talked to the family about that, and we're really excited about it. As we honor our past and celebrate our future today, we now would like to welcome one of our students to share his perspective. Bernard Reen is studying business administration and is president of our Student Government Association. Bernard, where are you? You're up. All right. I don't know where anybody is. Get up here. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So my name is Bernard Reen, and I am the um, president of the SGA, Student Government Association. And um, I would like to today talk to you a little bit about um, my past achievements, my future goals, and what I love about Ivy Tech. So I actually come from a family of nine children, and um, I'm not the first one in my family to actually go to Ivy Tech. My two older brothers, uh, Stephen and Dominic, um, also graduated from Ivy Tech, and my oldest brother, Stephen, went on to IUPUC um, to complete a degree in communications. And now he is in law school, and working as a paralegal for the Attorney General uh, while he does part-time law school. And my second oldest brother, Dominic, went to Ivy Tech when he was 15 and um, completed a degree in software development, um, and now he's in the seminary. And my younger sister, Virginia, who is going to attend Ivy Tech in the spring, um, she is uh, a first chair in, well, yeah, first chair in the uh, Columbus Philharmonic, and she, so yeah, she's going to uh, attend in the spring. Um, so this is why I'm very excited that there's a new building, and unfortunately, I won't be able to attend uh, the building. <laughs> but my younger siblings will be able to, so I'm very happy for that. And a bit about my future. Uh, right now, I'm working for a company called MAB Fabrication. And this is a, an industrial um, fabricating and uh, and manufacturing company where they um, they cut and bend metal and uh, and do fabricating and so right now I'm taking an accounting class uh, and it's very interesting that my accounting class is it kind of works with what I'm doing um, in sales so it, it you know it's very helpful and uh, I love doing them both at the same time um, it's in Walton Kentucky and so I commute there while I do classes and that's why I love one of the things I love about Ivy Tech is um, the fact that there's a Learn Anywhere, which is Zoom classes, virtual Zoom classes, um, where I can take classes and be somewhere else. Because unfortunately, um, I was in Kansas, and I got in an accident, and I wasn't able to come back to go to class. And so luckily, uh, I was able to just hop on my phone and um, log into class and complete assignments there. So that was very helpful. Um, I also love the, my professors. They're amazing and they're always very helpful, um, and yeah, they're just incredible. And also, because I'm a part of the SGA, I'm doing surveys where I go around and ask students what they like and what they dislike about Ivy Tech, and it's great to see that you know most of the things they're saying are extremely positive, how they love the campus, and how they just love um, what's going on here. So, um, as you can tell, I love Ivy Tech, and, and I'm very happy to be here. It's taught me you know, commitment, resilience and responsibility and I can't wait to see what Ivy Tech has in store for me, my family, and my friends. So thank you. I'd like to introduce um, the Executive Director for Development of the Ivy Tech Foundation, Mrs. Copeland. <laughs> He asked if he could call me Therese Copeland, and I said absolutely, but he still went with the missus, so we went, we went formal. So um, I love hearing from our students. They are the reason we are here, and they are the reason why we're doing what we're doing, so thank you, Bernie. I really appreciate you taking the time to come. So um, your presentation really speaks to um, the polling legacy for educational attainment. It is alive and well in Columbus, Indiana. So for that reason, as Stephen mentioned, we are going to be preserving that name um, in a um, 
uh, uh, in, the, in the front of the building, we're going to have um, a dedication to uh, Mr. Poling because we do not want to lose that. So um, as Dr. Combs mentioned earlier, um, we have a very exciting announcement for today. Um, our community has um, shown a ton of support for this building project and getting behind our students and what we're um, about to accomplish with this new building. And we are very excited to announce a new namesake for the new building. So uh, it is my honor to display the new name. So we thought we would throw you guys off by introducing uh, Tony as one of our former uh, State Board of Trustees. He, and he is, and he absolutely is a true statement, but we thought that that may uh, throw you off on who to keep the excitement on who the namesake was going to be. But with us is Tony, and he has brought two members of his lovely family, Orion and Annette Moravec, are here to um, uh, celebrate with us. Um, Tony as everybody knows, is very well known in this community and throughout Indiana for his skills as a businessman, his thoughtfulness, his kindness towards others, and his generosity. Most people know that Tony Moravec is the owner of Applied Laboratories, Blair X Laboratories, Saharico's Ice Cream Parlor and Museum. Have to check it out. It's fabulous if you haven't seen it yet. And the developer of the Pump House with Upland Brewing Company. He absolutely demonstrates his love and support of Columbus, Indiana, time and time again. Tony also has a heart for our students and he is an advocate for education. He's represented the city of Columbus on the Ivy Tech Foundation Board starting in 2009 and was appointed to the Ivy Tech State Board of Trustees um, in 2014. His legacy of giving to Ivy Tech spans 30 years. He established a tremendous um, uh, scholarship, um, endowed scholarship for our students and it is particularly for our STEM students. And I remember when I was talking to Tony about setting the criteria for this scholarship, one of the things that he mentioned was that he wanted um, it to be um, an average GPA. And the reason I believe that he did that and mentioned that he believes in the underdog and he understands their struggles. So Tony has left his footprint on the college and this community, that is a understatement. Therefore, in consideration of his significant contributions to the Ivy Tech Community College, we are absolutely honored to announce that we are here today and our new building will be named in honor of Tony Moravec and his family. With his incredible support, he has, he has absolutely transformed the lives of so many students and that ripple effect impacts their families, and not only our community, but the surrounding communities and counties that we serve. Tony, I want to thank you so much for your generous partnership and all the students that you've helped and all the future generations that you're going to help through this modern, innovative, academic-focused campus. Tony, we'd love to hear from you if you'd like to say a few words. Thank you, Thrix. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Dr. Sue Elsperman, our, our president of Ivy Tech. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Combs, our chancellor here of Columbus, Becky Miller, our president of uh, the foundation, and Jess Brand, our trustee trustee, who uh, was my mentor many years ago, uh, trained me, and uh, I'm glad to see him back in that role as he's done an excellent job. I especially want to recognize and thank the polling family for being here for not being here today, but uh, they were going to be here today. I can confidently say that Mr. Poling's legacy for education attainment is inspirational. And we're all grateful that he took the necessary steps to assure that this great community and facility uh, wound up in Columbus and he got it approved through the state legislature, which as we know, Jess and I as trustees, that can be a challenging task. We work for, work for several years to get Columbus' his new building approved for, uh, that we're working on now, 
and uh, it got shot down a couple times because of other more important issues that popped up around the state and economic conditions. But here we are today, thankfully. I'm a firm believer that good education can change a person's life. Education can provide the skills individuals need to earn a good wage and provide themselves and their families and improve the quality of their life. Education can also unlock potential in individuals and provide their self-worth. Uh, as a, a state trustee, I had the great fortune of traveling around the state to the 19 different locations, and it was inspirational to me to hear the talk from the students. The students could, would get up and tell their stories, and, and they were compelling. Through some students that came from nothing, got their degrees, and got good paying wage jobs, and became great, great, greatly successful, and were able to transform that into stories that all the students could hear. And that inspiration led me to believe that we had, the state provided great facilities through their promotions and, and community donations. But what seemed to be lacking a, a little bit to me is an opportunity for those less uh, financially capable to get their education. So my feeling was if I could ever provide something of substantial benefit to the college, it would be scholarship. And that's why I've decided to commit my donation to a scholarship of STEM students. The Russians, the uh, Chinese, the Indians are all pushing STEM education in their schools. They're far ahead of Americans today. We're going to lack far behind. If we don't do something soon, all of our children and grandchildren will wind up working for Chinese, Japanese, and, and uh, Indian firms because they'll be the high-tech people and we'll be the servers. So STEM education is critical to how we move forward. And I'm excited to hear that Ivy Tech is going to take a lead with STEM education through scholarship that we're going to be working on with them shortly. I also want to thank my family. I wouldn't be here today, obviously, if I didn't have the full support of my family, my uh, parents, my grandparents. My grandfather was an immigrant from the Czech Republic. He came to this country at the turn of the century with basically little nothing but the shirt on his back. I am the first generation college student in the family. Uh, I'm a one of ten children, worked my way through college, and uh, now I'm happy to say that my seven children are all college educated, and they understand the value of education and hard work. Those are the two keys that will put you ahead in life, nothing more, education, hard work. With that, I would just like to say that uh, God bless America, and God bless Columbus, Indiana, and thank you very much, and have a wonderful day. Tony, we want to thank you again and express how much we appreciate the significant support that you've provided our students. Your words truly bring home why this new building is so important to our students and the communities that we serve. I would like to recognize and thank a few other organizations that have shown um, great support um, for our building project through some major gifts that we've received. I have to mention Cummins Foundation for their donation of um, the um, architecture design program. Um, they helped with the funding design so that this could truly be an inspirational um, building here in the community. Um, I'd like to thank the Heritage Fund, Tracy Souza, Kyle Hendricks. Is Lori Thompson, did she? Is Lori here? Oh, Lori's out of town. Okay. I just wanted to thank you guys. They are sponsoring our grand staircase. So those who have seen the um, thing of that, they, they are sponsoring that. So very appreciative of that. Thank you. Um, Janine Scheidler and Brock Beal of Old National, um, they are sponsoring our food pantry and the hub space that um, we have um, got in the building. So thank you guys. I appreciate you. Um, Stephanie Flynn with Schneck Medical Center. She was our very first donation and um, they will be sponsoring um, one of our nursing classrooms. Uh, Rick and Alice Johnson, um, they are naming our second floor student commons. Custer Nugent Foundation is supporting our community room. Uh, the Reeves Foundation is um, supporting our Surge Tech Labs. Um, Hutch and Kavina Shoemaker are naming a classroom. Um, Jackson County Bank is um, naming our Bursar's office. First Financial Bank is naming our Student Life Office, and Central Credit Union is sponsoring a um, huddle space. 
And I do have one anonymous couple who are sponsoring our boardroom and they've asked that I keep them anonymous for a little while longer. So the generous con contributions um, help us get the innovative equipment that we so desperately need to provide the workforce that our local employers need. So right now we have raised, go ahead and flip and then, $1,789,670 for the future of the campus. We, it amazes me when I talk to my colleagues across the state. Um, they are always bragging on our community and just how collaborative and coming together it is. And so I just get to look at them and sweetly say, well, it's the Columbus way. So um, thank you for all of you coming. Um, I do um, want to have Stephen come up to conclude today's event. Okay, we have some fun stuff now for you. Um, not that that wasn't fun, that number was fun. Let me just tell you that right there. So uh, again, I wanna thank uh, uh, um, everybody who was here, but I wanna do a couple of special thank yous too. There's another individual who's in the room that I didn't um, recognize a little bit earlier, but I really think I need to do that because this person is such a great partner to the college and has helped us do something that no other campus has been able to do. General Cliff Tooley, uh, if you would raise your hand, please, let people know you're here. General Tooley is the former adjutant general for the state and is here representing uh, the uh, Indiana Defense Network and all the wonderful he work he does. He was really instrumental in helping us start our cyber academy at Muscatatech. So if you get a chance to thank him for that work, thank you for being here, General. It's such an honor to have you with us today, so thank you for that. So now we have the fun part. I'm gonna try and direct you through the process, okay? So we have a beam up here. This is a, it's kind of a faux beam, but it's really heavy, so be careful with it. You can't hurt yourself on the edges. We're gonna have, where are my pen holders? Can we have Tony sign first? Oh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Morvek, would you join us up front, please? <laughs> Tony is going to demonstrate the proper way to sign <laughs> the beam. We have so, Marla, if you would present Tony with a pen. And you get to choose a color. Now we're going to have more pins up here. Don't worry. We're going to have this taken here. <laughs> Woo! Right. Thank you, Tony. You're welcome. Um, so the, the beam signing, the areas are the top. Here, the other side as well, because this will be displayed on both sides or this bottom part. Please don't flip it over and sign on the bottom. That won't be good. You won't see that. So we want to do that. So we want you to do that. We also have, as, as was mentioned earlier, we have gifts, parting gifts for you. We also, because I know I have some employees playing along, we have our stickers for this event. So our employees, we're doing stickers for every event leading up to the building opening and I'm challenging them to collect them all by participating. And so you get your sticker today. Uh, those of you that are not employees, grab a sticker. We got plenty of them, all right? So we want you to join in too. Uh, but make sure everybody who's here, we'd love for you to come up and sign before you leave. Please do that. Whether you're a guest or you are an employee, we want you to join in that festivities. Let me just say one last thing about Tony. Uh, I knew Tony had a generous heart uh, when I first came to Columbus and I had an opportunity uh, to serve as campus president. Tony, and here's why I, I'm going to tell you how generous this man is, because I wouldn't have done this. <laughs> he and I, <laughs> Tony's probably wondering, oh my gosh, what story is he getting ready to tell? Tony and I had an opportunity to drive to Scottsburg, Indiana one day. He has an uh, interest early on in, in electric vehicles. And we went down there to check on a organization that was repacking batteries. And this was probably eight years ago now. Tony had one of the first Teslas in Columbus. So we drive down, he says, you want to take the, the Tesla down? I said, oh, I'd love to drive in the Tesla. You guys know me, I'm a tech guy. So yes, I definitely want to do that. So we drive down and Tony's driving, we're, we're getting to know each other, we go visit, we head out of the, uh, the battery uh, replenishment uh, organization, and he just looks at me, and I think he can tell. He says, you really want to drive it, don't you? <laughs> so, well, yeah, but I'm not going to ask. And he, and he, and so he pitches me the keys, and I get to drive this Tesla back. Now, who in here is going to have a brand new Tesla? These are very rare, and just pitch the keys over. And I, and I thought at that point, that is a generous man right there to give 
<laughs> little old me an opportunity to drive this car. It was phenomenal. I loved it. Thank you, Tony. You did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't wreck it, which was great. So, but Tony, I do want to thank you and your family. I'm looking forward to getting a chance to meet your family here. This is really special for us. We've known uh, Tony for, as, as was mentioned earlier, for many years. He's been such a great supporter of the college, great friend for me, great mentor for me in the community. I can't wait till we step into Moravec Hall in less than a year. It's gonna be great. And when we do, there'll be another ceremony similar to this where we'll be opening, doing a ribbon cutting, and we're gonna want you all to come back. So this is just the first phase of our celebration. So thank you for joining us. Again, get your goodies, make sure you get your signature on here. Thank you for joining us, and please mingle, keep your social distance, wash your hands, whatever you need to do, be safe, okay? Thank you for joining us today. <laughs>